So high pressure fuel pump problems often crop up when we start discussing typical problems associated with engines. So in this video, we're just going to look at the typical symptoms that happen that can indicate the high pressure fuel pump or the HPFP is starting to fail or give out on you and just help you to really know where to look, how to diagnose this problem and indeed how to prevent it from happening. There's a few things that we can do as a driver that will prolong the life of our high pressure fuel pump. So in a modern direct injection engine, particularly now gasoline engines are running at insanely high pressures. It's something they stole from diesel engines where we've gone from port injection to direct injection. And this to some extent will apply to diesel engines, although the injection system in a diesel engine is quite different to that of a gasoline or a petrol powered engine, there's still some takeaway symptoms that can indicate a fueling problem. So whether you've got a diesel, gasoline, petrol powered car, this video should be useful to you. Hopefully there'll be some takeaway information that'll help you to understand problems and issues that are developing in your fuel system. You can nip that in the bud and mitigate that problem from getting worse further down the line. So first thing you might notice is a reduction in fuel efficiency. The fuel economy is dropping. Maybe the performance is also lacking or you're starting to run out of puff at higher RPMs. So just thinking about the engine as a whole, the engine is really a fuel pump, an air pump. It's pulling as much fuel and air in as it can in order to make power. So the higher the RPMs are, the greater its need for fuel. So a lot of high pressure fuel pump problems are more noticeable at the mid to top end of the RPM range rather than at the low end, because at the low end, it's not doing a lot of work. You don't need a lot of fuel shifting through the fuel system. So as those revs climb up, that's the point you start to notice the power loss. So most other issues that happen within an engine will cause a power loss across the entire RPM range. But when problems happen at the top end, that's usually an indicator that it's this high pressure fuel pump that is starting to play up. You may start to get engine misfiring problems, and that's really down to the injectors not being able to deliver enough fuel. So it's making calculations to try and compensate for this erratic supply of fuel, and that can lead to misfires or hesitancy or loss of power. It may even cause the engine to stall completely, or you may have trouble starting the engine from cold. Some high pressure fuel pump problems are not actually an issue with the fuel pump themselves, but in the fuel line that feed that fuel pump itself. So if the fuel lines are leaking, they're not able to hold the pressure. Now bear in mind, you're operating at really high pressures within the fuel pump. So the high pressure fuel pump is generating all this pressure. If there's a leak somewhere in the system, you're gonna notice that. You're gonna be able to smell the fuel around the car and you'll have all these intermittent running problems or power glitches or flat spots that you're dealing with. So just keeping an eye out for these abnormal smells around the engine can indicate really that it's not the high pressure fuel pump, but the fuel lines from or to the high pressure fuel pump. Don't overlook the importance of fuel filters as well, because sometimes a clogged filter can affect the flow of fuel. So you might be thinking it's the fuel pump when actually that's just doing the best job it can to push the fuel through this really, really dirty clogged filter. So so this really takes us to the things that you can do to minimize the risk of having high pressure fuel pump problems. So changing the fuel filter, using high quality fuel. I noticed that a lot of issues come from lower grade fuels. So that lower grade fuel may not be cleaning the fuel system as effectively. It may contain contaminants that are starting to clog the filter up slightly more quickly. Now, most countries have fairly rigorous testing facilities and the fuel needs to meet a certain standard before it's shipped out. But that doesn't always work. There's been all sorts of issues, even in this country, where some batches of supermarket fuel have had a contaminant in that has caused caused the entire fuel system of cars to fail. Just making sure that the tank is properly topped up. A lot of people say that the fuel tank, all the silt and stuff collects at the bottom. And if you allow the fuel level to run down, that's just gonna get sucked through the fuel system. But I think that's a little bit of an urban myth. Let me know what you think. The fuel pickup is in the bottom of the tank where the debris is. So you're not gonna have any more of that debris and crud that's building up in the tank just because you've topped the tank up. It's probably a little bit more diluted 
engine. But the fuel filter's job really is to catch any of these contaminants within the tank. Now, in a modern engine, you've generally got a plastic tank. Sometimes it, it's metal, but the tanks are very well designed. It's a sealed unit. You're pumping the fuel in. There's very little scope for external contaminants to start dropping into the fuel tank. And also our driving style. If we're always on the throttle, if we're overworking the high pressure fuel pump, that can lead to issues. And another problem that you've got with having a tank running low is that there's a possibility that the high pressure fuel pump is going to be starved of fuel there'll be a gap and effectively an air line. So when a pump starts pumping and it's effectively got bubbles of air that it's pumping, it's going to increase its rate of spin. That's just one of the things that happens within a pump and it's not got the fuel flowing through it to cool it down. So it tends to burn out or it's doing a lot more work and it will degrade much more quickly in those conditions. So it's just a good idea to make sure that the fuel is always topped up. So the pump may also exhibit abnormal noises when it's doing this. So you might notice a clicking or a whirring sound. You will generally have a situation where the high pressure fuel pump is starting to complain. It's making noises, ticking noises, knocking noises, or there's some vibration coming from the fuel system. So another thing really is just high pressure fuel pumps do wear out. They do a lot of work. They're running at high pressures. So over time, that is going to degrade and it's not going to be able to supply enough pressure to the fuel system. So it could just be that the mileage has crept up and it's time to replace the fuel pump anyway. So quick search online generally reveals the lifespan of most high pressure fuel pumps. So generally, when we do a video about engines and engine problems, we'll try and flag up any common issues that crop up like the high pressure fuel pump failing. And that tends to happen at fairly high mileages, but it seems to be common to each group of engine. So just being aware of where the limits are in the lifespan of the stock factory fuel pump can go a long way. And it certainly makes sense to try and upgrade that to get a better condition or better flowing high pressure fuel pump, one that's going to give you more reliability, especially since a lot of our viewers are going to be tuning and upgrading their cars. So their need for fuel delivery is going to be increased over the stock fuel system's ability to supply it. So it certainly makes sense not to push that fuel system too far and to get an aftermarket unit that can take over and replace that factory one by providing enough fuel for your needs. So thanks for watching. Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that should help you to get more performance out of your engine. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.